story. It has happened. Fine. It's finally here. Fine. <laughs> I was like, oh, why haven't I been here today? It's under the sun. Listen. I know. For everyone that knows me, but you ain't never had me. But finally. Yeah. Listen, it's only a matter of time because we can't have any type of show with the most inspirational creative people in STEM without having Tim Corey. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just gotta have Tim Corey. <laughs> yeah, so welcome, welcome to STEM Media Live for the for the first time, the first of many, I'm sure. Um yes, yes, yes. You see the hearts coming. Everybody's happy to see you. You got the love. And um Thank you for joining us because I'm about to ask you a couple of questions that I've just been really always curious about, Corey, to be honest, as I follow your journey, as I see you do your thing on the ground and across the space. Um, but let's start here. Okay. Give us a fun fact about yourself um, that a person wouldn't expect to hear from a post postdoctoral researcher. Fun fact. Let's see. A lot of people don't know this, but I am like a vegetarian. Vegetarian. I've been vegetarian since 2008, and then I tried. Get out of here. Yeah, I tried salmon one day, and I'm like, oh, I need to incorporate fish into my diet. So I guess I haven't eaten meat for almost 12 years now, and so. Wow. And also, fun fact: a lot of people may see or notice, but I do have a nose ring or a nose piercing. <laughs> had it. Okay. Okay. Had it, it done in high school, and I've had it ever since. So. That's why when people are like, oh, I can't have a tattoo or I can't have a piercing. I'm like, I'm I'm pierced up. I got visible yeah. tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. And that does not change who you are and the knowledge and intelligence that you bring to the field. I love it. You guess what? I'm a vegetarian too. I probably I guess you didn't know that. I bet you didn't know that. I did had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm actually was raised vegetarian. And so I remember like growing up, I was like, man, I wonder what a hamburger tastes like. And of course <laughs> I'm like <laughs> Of course, I've like had my experiences and, and tried it out since then, but I just kind of got used to it and been sticking with it. Do you feel like you um, will ever go back to getting down on some ribs and stuff like that, or you're good? No, it smells good. Don't get me wrong, and it looks good, but I my body's much happier with what I put in it now versus when I did eat meat. So I always got say, you. Try, give it a try. You just never know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And definitely got to incorporate some salmon in there too. As long as you got that, you're straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. Let's talk about the, I guess, the early days. Because you already shared just a little fun fact about yourself and, and just, you know, the nose rings and piercing and everything. One of the things that I feel like uh, about you is that you are unapologetically you in like so many facets, right? A creative person, a person who's expressive. Um, give us a little insight about the early days. How do you get into science? What is some of your upbringing that you feel uh, contributed to who you are right now today? Of course. Um, so I'm actually the child of military parents. So my parents were both in the army, did 20 plus years of peace. And mm -hmm. so I put a lot as, as I was a kid. I lived in Belgium, we lived all over the United States. Yeah. So he has like a younger child, was very kind of much to myself, a loner. Um, I would say more introverted, sometimes maintaining and creating friendships was hard for me just because I would mm -hmm. always be leaving. And so I think science kind of helped a little bit with that in the fact that my mom used to help me and my brother with our science projects. Um, my parents were very, very like sticklers about big education. You know, I'm a first generation college student, PhD. So they're like, mm -hmm. you know, school, make good grades. Honestly, if I brought home a B or less, my mom would look at me crazy, okay? And if <laughs> it wasn't an A plus, she'd be like, where are the other points at? You know? That's just right, like, right. Rigor yeah. that in the house, you know what I'm saying? So I think it wasn't until maybe high school when I was taking AP classes where I realized I think I really like science because, you know, AP classes are hard. But I was doing, understanding the material and had teachers. Mm -hmm engaging and I think it wasn't until I got to college when I was meeting like my first black PhDs ever and they right. were on since women or men you know and they were very mm -hmm. you know just that for them to have this type of love for their job and for them to look right like for bonus so yeah. when do internships during the summer since I did I was at an HBCU and unfortunately they're not our one institutions so I would go away yeah. for the 
and go do research, you know, and then come back. And again, you just appreciate being surrounded by scientists and people that look like you and care about you versus when you go to other places. Right, 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 right. Be a better scientist yeah. overall and just a better person. So yeah. So you went just jump in. You went to Norfolk State. You went to an HBCU, and yeah. um, there you go. Be <laughs> behold, all right, HBCU. And um, what really was like the, I guess the impetus for you going there? Like, why did you choose Norfolk State? Because I'm assuming that you kind of had like a lot of different colleges in your mind, yeah. through being that you were in AP classes yeah. and you had exposure to different geographical locations. So why, why Norfolk State? So I actually, I think I applied to like 14 or 15 schools when I was in college and I got into all of them and some of them did mm -hmm. scholarships, but Norfolk State was the only university that offered me a full ride to do science. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I was okay. Um, Let's do that. And so my mom. Let's, let's get it paid for it. <laughs> cross country tour. And yeah. Pull down the street from where we live. And I'm like, well, mom, they're not, you, you don't have to pay for anything. She's like, you were right. <laughs> she was money talk. Yeah. Because I really went to Emory was my top school and they were going to actually okay. grant and everything. But I was like, let me just go where I don't have to worry. I don't have to stress my parents out. Everything is covered. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in trusted hands. And so that's right. Susan and going to Norfolk State. For sure, man. And, you know, I went to HBCU, as you know. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just something affirming about going, like you said, to a place where people look like you, people care about you. You don't feel like a number. You know, there are people who <clears throat> are passionate about their jobs. They're exceeding at a high level. And you're like, yo, it's, this is definitely something I can see myself doing. It becomes easier for you to see yourself in that role because you see it every day as you go to class. And so you apparently, though, had like some sort of like drive early on that you wanted to be in science. Is that true? Like what was your, your bachelor's degree? It was in chemistry, right? Pre-med? Yep, chemistry pre-med. So I actually was okay. wanting to be a doctor, a physician. Um, okay. that's like the route, that's kind of what I knew. That's what you did, right? Afterwards, you were yeah. at med school. But I shadowed an OBGYN for a couple of years and... Seeing childbirth actually happen in real life is a lot different. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. And yeah. So patient interactions and watching how you know a doctor's schedule can be very kind of hectic. And so that right. says, okay, maybe I don't want to do med school. I'm kind of let me just go somewhere else to try something different. And grad school was that option for me. I mean, I worked mm -hmm. before I started grad school, but that was. Yeah this and the drive for me to do biomedical engineering and then so i was like okay all right this is the path i think i'm headed down and so i mean it's yeah. it wasn't a straight straight and narrow this is what i'm gonna do i had okay. a lot along the way a lot of downs yeah yeah so yeah i got Don't... yeah i'm sorry not to cut you off yeah dr corey grayson y'all people are already uh i see somebody already said wow it's corey the goat and <laughs> we love to see it jw steered Stuart says that in the chat. Y'all definitely give her some love. Thanks. Love by Carrington. Olivia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the GOAT. This is Dr. <laughs> Corey Grayson herself here on Stem Media Live. Um, you talk about the downs though. Just go back where you were. Like, do you have a story at all of any point where you perhaps like had like an inflection point where you're like, man, I could either step out or I could step up. Like one of those like initiating moments in your journey that you could tell us about. So it was actually after I graduated college, I was like, I'm going to take a gap year and I'm going to study, mm -hmm. I'm going to study for the MCAT and, you know, go to med school. Um, but when I did that, I ended up taking the MCAT twice because the first time, mm -hmm. good. the second time it was actually even worse. <laughs> wow. 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 I can relate to that. <laughs> but, but F it. I'm going to apply anyway. So <laughs> applied, but I applied to MDPH programs which are a lot more competitive than just MD programs because I still wanted to do research and so you know that's one spot compared to like 20 or 50 right and mm -hmm. so all told me no and I'm like well I guess I'm not going to med school anymore dang, dang. yeah <laughs> and and I knew from that experience you know maybe if I really wanted to go to med school I would have studied harder for the MCAT I would have tried mm -hmm. that on my doctors or whatever it was 
And that just wasn't my path. That just wasn't my calling. And then right. during that downtime, you know, wasn't nobody trying to hire a fresh out, you know, chemistry major with no experience. So my first right. two, well, first year, a couple months after graduating, I moved to Atlanta, live with my aunt, God bless her soul, that she like I even have a portion of in my PhD thesis where I'm like, thank you, Yvette. <laughs> oh, man, beautiful. <laughs> it went, yeah, right, right. I didn't go anywhere. So she uh, really kind of like helped with providing a home and allowing me to take my time getting on my feet. So, you know, I worked at Macy's for a year. I worked at Sun Trust. I was a bank teller. Um, I did like out B2B business to business sales at one point in time. Like I was hustling. Mm -hmm. just, like, mm -hmm. Odd jobs just to figure out what I was going to do next. And I finally got that job working at CryoLife, making that dialysis device, um, basically made yeah. assembly. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to apply to med school. And so, you know, med school, you apply to a whole bunch of places. I was like, grad school, I'm only applying to three. And that's Georgia Tech, Duke, and Cornell. Uh -huh. I, okay. I don't know how Cornell made it on the list. I was like, oh, let me just throw an IV on there, I guess. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Right. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't get into Georgia Tech. I did not get into Duke, but I, I got into Cornell. And you got into the Ivy. I got into Cornell. That's funny. For yeah. Some, <laughs> for some reason, right. I don't yeah. Know. And so. Meant to be. And it's been history ever since. And then I got NSF right after that. And, you know, with NSF, I was applying from working. I wasn't even in school. I didn't have a project. I wrote my project from scratch. I'm just trying to tell people what that is. What do you mean by NSF? Because I know some people are probably not in grad school yet. Explain okay. that. So NSF National Science Foundation, they have a graduate fellowship that you can apply for. And the rules have changed since when I applied, but basically it's to pay you to survive in grad school. And it's very prestigious though. And so right. right, you write a personal statement and then you also write a research statement. So a lot of times people that are undergrads or grad students, you're in a lab, you're doing research, so you have something to write about. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my case. I was coming from a job and I was doing assembly manufacturing with a device. There wasn't much research I could really put together with that. But mm -hmm. I ended up coming up with my own project. Reviewer one and two, they liked it. Reviewer three, maybe not so much, but they liked it. <laughs> NSF. And so I got a fellowship to the grad school. Um, before I even started grad school, I knew I had it. Mm -hmm. Then at Cornell, they also gave me another fellowship when I got there um, just to start. And I was like, I think this is the universe's way. This is God's way of telling me, all right, right. go to Cornell. Because I was going to actually not go and hold off a year and apply to Georgia Tech again. But my mom was like, just go and visit, see how you feel about it. And, you know, six years later... <laughs> Boom! You 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 in the P now? Were you always going to do a PhD, or were you first like I'm just get a master's and then get a PhD? Um, I did. Okay. And even then, when you're not familiar with the process because people like think you need to get a master's first and then a PhD. Right. Um, but a lot of PhD programs are kind of straight to PhD. You can get a master's along the way. And so right. about that from the grad school I was around, I was in Georgia. Um, them taking me under their wing. My fact, my friend Byron was like apply to NSF, apply to different fellowships. I, mm -hmm. I, I had literally no idea. And so right. being, like people like that around, my mom there to encourage me, my parents, you know, even though they may not exactly know what I'm doing, they're just like, yep. do it. <laughs> and so yep. Yep. And here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. For those who, who don't know the process, yeah, like getting those fellowships are huge, you know, like there's so many different ways to pay for grad school. Some involve more work than others, but it's really nice when you get a fellowship that can basically support you as you focus on your research, yeah. as you continue to like make sure that your priority is finishing your degree program. And so apparently you, um, you I guess you went to Cornell with that money and did, 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 did you have like a, your advisor, like find out about it afterwards? Like, so, cause I, I know for me, yeah, go ahead and tell that. Cause that helps. So, um, <laughs> So everyone knew, knows who has NSF or has money when you come into the program. So when right. I, I literally interviewed with every single person, faculty person in our department because they knew I had money. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that works. <laughs> it works in your favor because you're like, mm -hmm. right, well, now I can like pick who I want to work with. But I knew I only right. advise for somebody else. But 
you know, people were willing to have me in their lab. So, I mean, it's a good thing, definitely to a degree, but I'm like, yeah, I don't like your research. <laughs> I don't really like your, I don't really know what you do. I really care for what you do, but yeah. it's a little bit more leverage and power, even when it comes to being in a lab, but it can sometimes have its drawbacks because with fellowships, you're funding your own self. And sometimes the PI may not have you on a specific project, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that they would have for someone that they are funding or the different kind of rules they would have or requirements they have for them is a lot different from a student that that doesn't and so right I, sometimes during my phd i was just kind of like floating figuring stuff floating, out. floating yeah. yeah like not uh, not sure if this is going to work or not really having yeah direction but you know the last right. is, you know it's like the last three like the last couple of years i figured it out yep. and i did yep. No, I feel you. Like, that was my experience, Corey. I don't know if you know this. Like, I came to no. my PhD program with an external fellowship, a NASA fellowship, actually. No. And so that made me, helped me get in the door very easily. I was able to find somebody to work with. But then when it came to, like, equipment and supplies, it's like, you know, the other students already had it on deck. It was already in the supply room, da, da, da. I you know, all their specimen stuff. For me, I was like, yo, like, can I get, like, what what we, you know? And so I feel you. Love. Can I get some love? Like, bro. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's funny. But you, you know, you figure it out, and I think that that really builds, you know, character along the way. Builds a lot of confidence when you're able to look back and say, "I was at a point where I had no idea where I was going, where the next step was." But then now you eventually completed it, and you got it done. So that's that's great. Now it's that. Yeah, it's that degree. Hey, put some respect on your name. You know what I mean? Yes. Put some respect on it. Yeah, yeah. This is Dr. Corey Grayson. Yes, biomedical engineer, currently a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Michigan. Corey, uh, go ahead and do this for us then, so they can really know that you don't just pretend, you don't play a PhD, you are actual one. So give us a nice cliff note summary um, explanation of what your research, your PhD research first, your doctoral research was in a way that, uh, you know, a person who may not be in the field could yeah. kind of grasp a little bit. So yeah. go ahead and break that down. So for my PhD research, it really started with a focus on drug delivery because that's where my PI, his area of expertise, we were figuring out. And so that's basically like targeting a specific disease using different drug delivery methods. So I got interested in the prostate cancer. My grandfather was diagnosed with prostate cancer and he died subsequently two years later. And so I was like, okay, well, now I have a passion mm. for something, at least a specific disease. So, you know, this will kind of help me as far as figuring out what's next. And so we had this protein that we have in our lab that everyone uses called Trail. Long word, y'all don't want to know it. But anyway, this is <laughs> what it hey, you heard me trying to pronounce during your intro. I was like, ooh, ah, I should okay. actually pronounce this for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so what that protein and mm. so we specifically put that on liposomes, which are just like nanoscale kind of things that like simulate what your actual cells look like. So what that does mm -hmm. is increases the circulation time in your body for what you want to target. And so for oh. I wanted to sp focus specifically on late stage prostate cancer and metastatic prostate cancer be because African-American men are disproportionately affected by this disease. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they will um, show up clinically with larger tumor volumes, faster growing tumors at later stages, and it's just, and people still don't know exactly why that is happening. Um, so that right. specifically, this is how my project came together, right? I just like, what am I passionate about? I want to help my community. Let me start there using what's we lab. And so I basically did like a combination treatment where I combined the current therapies that we use to treat metastatic prostate cancer with TRAIL to see if those chemotherapies will sensitize the cells enough to actually mm -hmm. cause what we call apoptosis or programmed cell death via the TRAIL protein. And so it did. So I did that in a 2D format and I figured out the mechanism of how that worked. And then I also did mm -hmm. it, I made it tumor spheroids, my little tumor babies. And then yeah. I a project where I injected the liposomes into a mouse model. So I gave, quote unquote, gave the mouse prostate cancer by injecting prostate cancer cells into a mouse prostate. And then y'all, okay. a mouse prostate is very hard to find. So
So I was the only one in my life. I can imagine. Super small, yeah. Exactly. And then what I did was I looked at the tumor, what we call landscape, to see what white blood cells were actually infiltrating that tumor and also carrying that trail nanoparticle with it. So basically, that was my whole research, looking at ways that we can better treat uh, the primary tumor uh, in uh, prostate cancer, as well as different ways of uh, the combination therapy and how that works. So that was my whole PhD. Got you, got you. And obviously, as you mentioned from the start of it, this was something that has an impact. It affects, you know, mm -hmm. our community, people that you care about. Even um, just want to acknowledge iHeart Travel, who who shared with us. Our heart goes out to you. This is what took my father. And yeah. So, so yeah, please please accept our our, our condolences uh, of that situation. But obviously, it's something that makes impact. Obviously, it's something that um, has a strong why to it. Because so often, like people can lose touch of why that research or why you know finding a rat. A mouse's prostate even has like relevance, right. you know, but like this, this is stuff that actually is going to impact people's lives. This is something that can really make a difference. And so I just want you to maybe speak on just that, that idea, right? Well, people who may say, you know, why do I go into research? It seems a little high above my head, you know, all this stuff. It's too many big words. You know, yeah. what would you say to that person who's looking for that? Like just to connect it to the reason why we need to maybe even consider going on that deep into stuff. Of course, of course. And I see a lot of people are saying, yeah, that sounds interesting, very similar. It does, but when you're in it, it doesn't seem that interesting. <laughs> it can get mundane. It can get very mundane, right? Right, because like, sometimes you do the same experiments over and over again. But yeah. the reason and how I found my why and my passion was just because of how it affected people in my family, like seeing my dad, you know, when his dad was sick and how they interacted and knowing like my where it could possibly affect someone that, you know, is at this level or has family that is dealing with this disease. I mean, I'm not saying my research is going to get into a patient tomorrow. I don't even know. That wasn't just my people. Right. But right. something that could possibly have an effect or cause the person that finds the cure to think about it and, you know, find another way to treat it. And so I think mm -hmm. for, for me, it's like you have to find a project you're passionate about because if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to finish your program. You're not going to be interested mm -hmm. in even, you know, learning more about the field. So my, my passion, okay, something that affects my family, it's something that affects, you know, black men or an African American community. All right, cool. Now what's a, a way I can like treat it even better than what's being currently done? Like I was getting, you know, excited thinking about it, coming up with these different things that I could do, even going 3D. Mm -hmm. It's cool to do this. Wow. All in the cell culture but I'm like well what happens when we actually include like dimensionality in it because then that's a different wow. of you know treatment because sometimes cells are are more resistant that way you know versus 2D versus 3D so sometimes that's why we have problems translating things from the bench top into a patient because we do a yep. lot of work in 2D but that's not actually replicating what's happening in the human body and so right. now Postdoc, I'm trying to take those same type of 3D spheroids, but for colorectal cancer and just using like some chemical engineering principles. So, yeah, it's yes. just, yeah, getting back to to your why, Teresa, and understanding why yeah. this, what is something that you can do to make or solve this problem. I mean, you're not going to again your research or whatever you you're doing your PhD in is just going to push help push the field forward. It's push it forward, right? It's not always going to be the last thing. But it's something yeah. to push it forward. But you got to have your yeah. why, the reason why, Definitely. what you're passionate about for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, sometimes, like I know, early in my PhD, I was like, "Oh man, I'm about to get a Nobel Prize for this. Like, I'm about to change the world." You know, when you're writing up the, right. the proposal, and you kind of like, and you realize that's important. But like you said, sometimes you just got to realize, "Hey, I'm just going to help us move forward." closer to where things need to be. I may not be the one to get there. Maybe the next person may not be there. You know, it may be a long string of people, but ultimately I know that I'm contributing to something much bigger um, than just a degree in and of itself, you know? Now I know we have yeah. a princess. She's actually like, how do you, I guess, how do you find your- Go about, yeah. And so it takes time. Sometimes it's going to that, a seminar and it might spark an idea. Um, have mm -hmm with a lab mate and it might spark something really talking to your research advisor like i understand this is your area of expertise or research can i do this can i try this um, right 
even then, I think I really didn't really become that passionate about it until my PI came with me to write it and came to me and was like, can you write a grant for about health disparities? Pick one and I happened to choose prostate cancer. And then I also learned about my grandfather's diagnosis. And then that's when mm. I really passionate about the health disparities, especially cancer health disparities within the African American community. And so I was like, okay, that's, a, that's I think that's a good why. And so those yeah. give up, I be like, you know, I'm mastering out. I don't care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, it really helped push me through. And then, you know, my family, right. they're like, yeah, yeah cool. Or, you know, that sounds interesting. Or, you know, if you need anything, let us know. So having that kind of support really helped propel me and keep me in my program and keep me going. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Good question, Princess. Thanks for asking that question. Everyone, thanks for your feeding. Dr. Olu Bamiji, thanks for sharing as well. Oh, yeah. Um, condolences and care to you. She's, she's, she's there. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yep, 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 yep. Good, important work, important work. Now, so check this out, though, Corey. When we talk about why, you know, one of the things, just to get a little less specific on the actual research, but just the why for being in these fields, the why for thriving in these fields, I've always felt um, that there's something inspiring about inspiring. Being able to project an image and show people what STEM success looks like, what a scientist looks like, what an engineer looks like, has always been something that's been personally rewarding to me. And this is why STEM Media was started. This is why I do the things we're doing. And when I think about you and I see all the things that you're doing online and the gram and all of that, I, I think that, man, you know, you're one of those people where I look at, I'm like, yo, like, she absolutely gets it. Like, she gets it. Like, I just, there's really like, you know, like, you have an image in your mind of what things should be, right? Or how we should kind of embrace, just again, expression within these fields. You are a person I feel like um, epitomizes it in so many different ways. Um, so I just want to ask you about some of the stuff that, you know, I popped off on the ground. When I first saw you, when I first saw you, um, I think the very first Thing I saw of you was when you took a picture with a black t-shirt on that says this is what a scientist look like yeah and it felt like it felt like that t-shirt I mean that photo went like everywhere I was seeing it in like random places and stuff like that so give us the background I got some other to action too but give us the background of like your your foray into social media and even that particular post in general so before that, like, I think I was just posting like really random things. Like there was no rhyme, no reason. I was just like, you know, I just feel like posting this today or let me just post yeah. it. And so I think around that time I was taking like social media, um, I was taking it a little bit more seriously. So I was like, what is okay. that I want to put out? What is the thing that if you come to this page of anything, what is it going to be? And so I actually got that shirt my first year in my PhD program, my roommate had a friend that came to visit and she gave us both the shirt. And mm -hmm. so I've had it for years, never really. Okay. It. And then that one day I said, let me just take some pictures and just see how it looks like, you know, if I want to be intentional about my content, what would it be? Took that right. And next thing you know, it was like, now went crazy. Right. <laughs> I yeah. can't, the phrase the phrase has been around for a very long time this is what a scientist looks like but for some reason i think that picture is very memorable and point is because of the phrase this is what a scientist looks like that it says on the shirt and also the fact who was wearing the shirt which was me and right how my hair was it was it was just yes kind of like you know curly hair everywhere kind yeah of probably what you would think or see when you see a scientist and so right I think people could really relate to that and they saw that and you know it now people tag me and they tell me hey this was posted on this page hey this is posted on this page i don't even get tagged in the picture anymore. It's just i know right <laughs> it's like stock photo now this is what it, you want to know what the size looks like oh there's one i've seen one before uh she's actually wearing a shirt that says it <laughs> oh, inspired you see kelly yeah post inspired me inspired the page oh thank you sis i appreciate that i Thanks. love it I love it. I love it. Dope, Kelly. Dope, Kelly. So was that the first thing for you where you was like, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Was that the first thing for you? Well, obviously you were doing it before, but was that something for you that you said, all right, you know what, this is, this is what's up. I'm going to do something. I'm going to kind of look for more creative ways to, yeah. to express that. Yeah. 
So after the response with it, I'm like, okay, I get it. People want to see what a scientist looks like and kind of what we're mm -hmm. And it's, it's not the typical thought that you would have. Because at the time, I think we, it was really dominated by these like white girls showing this is what's mm -hmm. happening. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, and that's what people kind of thought, or they had this idea of some, you know, old white dude with a, you know, I don't know. Pocket protector. <laughs> <laughs> right and then here i come out of nowhere I'm like hey I'm yeah I'm right <laughs> and you got and you got a nickname for your hair too which i think that's is pretty dope the, sheila you call your hair sheila <laughs> you got the nice right sheila, sheila. <laughs> but i had to put her up for this you know especially you know since our president i gotta be a little bit presidential. hey all right all right hey i ain't, I ain't mad at you <laughs> shout out to sheila Yep, yep. All right, so here we go. Here, BMA Queen. I was just about to ask about bring that one up. So let's talk about the wipe it down challenge when you actually yeah. finish your PhD. Man, like when I saw that, it just went banana. Like, I think I saw it honestly right after you posted it. And I was like, oh, this thing is out of here. And like, <laughs> next thing you know, DL Hughley posting it. It was on the BET Awards. I mean, it was just at, where else, like, are we like, where else did you kind of see it at? And you were like, whoa, I didn't even know that they would see it. They would see it this. Buzz. I think a lot of the HBCU people picked it up. Um, yeah. Watch the art. I don't. It was. It was all. It was literally all over. Yeah. I think even Cornell put, might have reposted it at one point in time. I have no idea. But yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> took a long time to film. That's why I don't normally do videos. Um, really. Because you got to keep the camera in the same place, and you know you're. Right can't really move the camera but you also got to do it in the same it's a lot of coordination like people who do this like on the regular my hat's off to them because that took a lot more work and then editing it putting it together took yeah this too but i was like, like you know i got nothing to do i just defended i got my phd i just took a graduate yeah Be because you defended this is just something like you defended during COVID, like you yeah. didn't have, you did it virtually, which was different. You know, a lot of people are used to doing it in their room with your committee, but you did it virtually. And then of course, graduation ceremonies. Yeah. Um, was yours canceled completely? Canceled. At Cornell? Oh. Wow. Yeah. Heart crushed because you, you live yeah. moments where you can share those memories with your family. And so to not be able to, to do that was very kind of heartbreaking. Like my, whole family bought tickets, they were coming, mm -hmm. to you know, I was ready to wear the robe, walk across, walk across stage and like, you know, hug my parents. Um, I knew there was going to be some tears involved, but I didn't get to. Yeah. So I think for me, doing the video was just like a way of like kind of celebrating. All right. Mm -hmm. Done it. I've made it, you know, let me just kind of like celebrate it in this moment. So when I posted it I, or shared it on, on my social media, I just thought people would just kind of be like, oh, that's cute. Like the normal, like, oh, that's cute. Right. Because everybody was doing, there were other <laughs> wiping down challenges. Yeah. Right. Everybody was doing different kinds of ones. So I'm like, oh, people are just going to be like, whatever. So then the person that runs the page, um, because of them, we can. She mm -hmm. reached Twitter and she's like, I really like this video. Can I share it? And um, I'm thinking she's talking about Twitter. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, fine. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> she shared it on the Instagram. She shared it on the Facebook. And she also shared Man. it on <laughs> And then yep. picked it up. And then a whole bunch of other people picked it up, like one or two, like celebrities, like people were just sharing it. I think SZA said congrats to me. And I was yeah, like, Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, This is, you know, this is it. Like, even my mom was saying, that's the best one I've seen. She's like, no bias, hands down. <laughs> yeah. That was the best one I've seen. And then my aunt's like, that's my sure. best. And I'm like, yes, I shall. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, yes, oh, Teresa said it was, the, yeah, at the end, I'm like, you go, girl. I don't know if people know what I'm saying. When I oh, that's what you said at the end. I remember what you said. I mean, I got the vibe, but I didn't know that's what you were saying. Okay, you were like, you go, girl. All right, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, hey, that was a celebration, though. Like, that was a really, you know, given the circumstances, yep. that it was a, a nice, nice little celebration. I love it, man. You made me want to, like, go back in time. I was like, yo, where my eyes at? Let me, let me <laughs> go throw my, my hood back on real quick. Let me follow up this wife and dad. <laughs> Shout out to my pop. My dad bought me my graduation gown as a gift. I love it. A graduation gown is very expensive. That's almost. Yes, it is. Dollars, if not more, depending on what you add or don't add. 
but you know right. as a gift i appreciated it and i'm like look dad it paid off for itself dl hughley yeah <laughs> and to, and I, i'll just bring this up too like in between there like you obviously are a person who enjoy uh carnival going to carnival you know what i mean showing off your creativity your expression there you already mentioned you know the nose piercing and the tats and everything and um i just always feel like yeah you bring a lot of like great energy to your face too and just like what you do online too because that that's part of it you know it's not all just stale and and just boring like this lifestyle like we actually have we have a life exactly. yeah all the time like i'm a human being just like everyone else like i said i got piercings no i got tats. yeah I got a whole big ass, sorry, I don't know if I can curse. <laughs> whole big tattoo on my side, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not, we're not a monolith. It's not one type mm -hmm. of, one type of way. It's literally, yeah. we like, pretty. yeah, Sean knows, Teresa knows. He's a couple of 2021. <laughs> oh, he no, looks like, people's life. And I yeah. just people in that time just so much because it's like so much freedom and celebration that you are having and like celebrating with people like the very first time i went i felt like this is where i you know i'm meant to be i don't feel out of place i feel like this is home and mm -hmm. you know, I'm with like um, every year that's who i go with and i you know, party with and every time i go i learn so much about the history of carnival the different yeah. types um you know maybe what some of the older folks like to do versus the young what carnival yeah. like versus what it looks like now uh, pan still drums, the different competitions, mm -hmm. and then we just go and we won't don't really sleep that much. And so <laughs> I still haven't done juve. That's on my list. Of okay. So juve is kind of like an early morning going into Carnival Monday, and we don't mm -hmm. done it just because I I need to sleep at least at some point, and so it's very mm -hmm. hard to when you're a female and you got to get up in the morning get your makeup done. So you know start. Right. Two o'clock in the morning, then I got to do my makeup at five and stay up all day. Nah, but now I'm I can't. I, I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. If I gotta, you know, take something to keep me up, I will. But you know, I'm trying to get mm -hmm. a full, full experience. But I love it. Yeah. Cool. One of the best. Literally one of the best experiences. experiences. Every time. Every time. I love it. I love it. Shout out to the homies, you know, who who you experienced it with. Keyline, Dr. Keyline Bishop yeah. out there. Teresa, good to see you. Uh Malika, Dr. Malika. Uh it's good to see all y'all, you know, just vibing, living your best life. Uh going and just enjoying yourself. So that's cool. That's and cool. Last year it was literally a whole bunch of engineers that I went with. It was five of us. And we all met at Cornell and we all went mm -hmm. on that trip. And and meeting up with Teresa and Keelan, you know, I'm like, oh, this is like the STEM trip. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Still take home. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's dope, that's dope. So I gotta ask you, I gotta bring this one up though. Talking about viral posts and the creativity. I gotta bring up the most recent HBCU doc challenge that I was so honored that I had an opportunity to be a part of. You know, Corey, I felt like I felt like I was called up from the minor leagues or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? You were, you were NBA. I was in the development league. You was like, yo, come on up. We need to put a spot on the squad. So um, <laughs> that joint is going crazy, especially on, on LinkedIn right now. So talk about that one. What was the inspiration behind that and the idea that, that you had? For that one, me and Keelan were talking. And, you know, because she went to HBCU as well. And, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I just got an Orange State sweater. And she's like, ooh, we should do like a video or something. I said, oh, yeah, we should. Like go from, you know, our PhD or PWI or whatever to our HBCU. Mm -hmm. was like, yeah, cool, cool. And I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. So who are we going to ask? <laughs> 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 we already in the video. So who are we going to ask? And so right, right, right. People we follow or that we know went to HBCU. <laughs> And then just ask them, hey, would you like to do it? Now I know some people, I, I see, I see you there. He's like, well, I'm mad. I know, right? You got I know you got a lot of those, Corey. You said I was mad I ain't get selected. I know you got a lot of those. <laughs> Look, y'all, we only had a minute and thirty. <laughs> a minute and forty and that. I know, right? And then someone added someone and I was like, oh, okay, all right, that's what but we gotta make it a short right? we ain't added nobody else, y'all. We gotta make this happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was such a great thing. Even in chat, you know how we would go in on each other. We was talking about right, it. right, yeah. Still like all love, you know. So getting yeah. up there.
was really like fun. I felt like I was a step master getting the step team together. Oh, uh, you got it. How, how do we do it in transition? So I'm like, look, y'all, this I'm in from coming from this side and go out. Yeah, you you made it all. You made it very like clear. Like, let's come from the left, come from the left, go to the right. You know, you was like making it very clear. I was like, yo, this is that's what's up. She got this organized. She got this organized, right? People people don't realize it ain't no just funny and tell me this post. Like there's a lot of genius that goes into this. <laughs> it, it is. So, that little conversation. Remember, I put in those long messages. I'm like, all right, y'all, just right. Have I got any more questions, like, let me know. Yo, I, I felt like I was submitting a, a, a paper for publication in a journal or something. I was like, yo, let me make sure my my formatting is correct. I know. I'm about to get it together. We're about to post this. Get it together. But in fact, the, I know. I mean, one, each of his videos were like a minute long. I said, ah, oh, Terrell, you don't have to redo these. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. And then Keelan, oh, I'm going to go redo mine. I need to. All right, girl. You know what, y'all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's that's dope. I, like I said, I, I was like, man, yo, I made the I made the All Star team. You know what I mean? I've been in the league for a minute. I finally got picked for the All Star game. You know, so that was dope. <laughs> Another one. I got, I got some some plays. Got gotcha. you, David. I see you, Oyen. Um, he's Oyen. for sure. Next time I got you, he went to Norfolk State with me, so he understands. We have oh, okay. And so, yeah, the next one, if we can, I know here, <laughs> she said she called me director and producer, stop this, sis. <laughs> but no, it's no easy feat, especially when it's more people doing my own was just like in its own kind of, it's just a lot of work. So people that do them on a regular basis, hats off. Yeah. Hats the, off. the comedians, shout out to the comedian us on Instagram and people with videos and, and yeah. stuff like that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like I just, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I just got a ring light. You know, people that yeah. yeah. So okay, way right. And so, so again, that's probably gonna be the last one for a while, because <laughs> you know, <laughs> right before that one as well, the Black and Cancer uh, video. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So no, that's no, I, I love it. And and shout out again. Of course, we got a lot more all stars out there. It, it's it'll be impossible to fit every. Hey. You know, person in the video, and I, I know y'all doing great things. So shout out to y'all. As he called me, Rudy, we so appreciate you. Yep, shout out to you. Um, you know, I think also what was dope about that one because it's still buzzing is that there was a purpose behind it too to kind of encourage donations to your HBCU, given the fact that you know a lot of us couldn't have our traditional homecomings this year. Mm -hmm. And so, um, just speak on that really, really quick before yeah. I got something else I want to ask you about. Yeah. Yeah. So we. Obviously, love our HBCUs, want to support our HBCUs, but sometimes they're not the most well-funded institution. So anything we can do to give back, we should. Like I just, I think this year we came a part of the alumni association for Norfolk State, and mm -hmm. and do because um, we need our HBCUs. They make seventy percent of you know black doctors and you know the rate mm -hmm. of PhDs, MDs. What, whatever you're thinking as far as like black professional or just a, a degree um they're making it they're making us making it possible so why not pay homage and salute especially also when they have like the best homecomings i mean come on so yeah <laughs> have just a just a, a small tribute to them right no doubt no doubt i love my hbcu oakland university and i'm still in the city you know where I graduated from, um, yeah. my PhD. And people, people saw me. They was like, "Hold on, man, what's up with that video?" It's like, "Yo, you trying to throw shade?" You know, NC State. I was like, "No, nah, no." Nah. I mean, listen, it was all about highlighting what's a large part of our DNA, which is that HBCU experience, right. which will but never change. I loved also about what we did is it was a lot of HBCUs people don't necessarily know or even heard of that were in that. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Case I mean, of point. Yeah. Made it in there twice, but. Other than that, the more, you know, well-known schools, they weren't in that video. It was, yeah. it was you know, Norfolk, you know, Oakwood, Lemoyne, um, yeah. just everything, Southern, every college or HBC you may not have heard of, but they make wonderful doctors like me and you. You don't have to make yeah. board or some. You can go to any HBC and still thrive. And, still right. thrive. and so that was also kind of like an under, like, pinning message. Right video as well. I love it. One big family. Shout out to RF 
Jower said, I know about Oakland. They all vegetarian. <laughs> he took, he said, <laughs> bringing it back to our, <laughs> right, right. We're vegetarian. Going back to our original uh, conversation. Uh, what would he say? I couldn't fit. Six HBCUs. I'm like, y'all, y'all gonna have to choose, all right? <laughs> I know, I know that's right. Yep, yep. I see you, Kim, HBCU Love. I believe she's out there at Howard, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so welcome to this is Dr. Corey Grayson. Howard is <laughs> my nerd. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Did it. <laughs> Dr. Kim actually is uh, very active on YouTube. She's been like journeying, uh, chronicling her road to her PhD. She's already proclaimed that's where she want to be. And so I know that she uh, she's probably one of the main people inspired by you as well. So shout out to you. Dr. Brewster, Tucky, you was in there, loved it. <laughs> uh, we went to uh, to see you, but yes. Yeah, Kim, she's like, I didn't even mention it. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> have to. We, we feel it. Hey, and you, hey, you know, hey, you already know there's, there's tons of it now. Now we got, you know, new vice president, like the first vice president. It's, 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 it's not ending. It's not ending. We just getting started. <laughs> All love. It's all love, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So listen, I have to go here. Um, we're talking about this is what some success look like. And this year, Corey, you gr- you join what we have been uh, jokingly referring to ourselves as the STEM Avengers yes. and planning our second annual STEM Success Virtual Summit. Listen, y'all, if you're on this, if you're watching this replay, you need to go to stemsuccesssummit.com because we're about to make the best virtual conference in STEM that you have seen all 2020. Listen, this is something that isn't like, we didn't just scramble and try to make this happen because of COVID. Like we, we've been on this wave and we want to bring it even better this year. So talk about that, Corey, if you can. Like, why do you think this is something that's a great opportunity for people uh, watching this to go and sign up and, and hang out with us uh, November 19th to 21st? I think it's just having young black people in STEM putting a conference together for the same people is just an amazing thing to me. I mean, I saw you guys last year. I saw the team. I'm like, hey, I know everybody on the team. I'm like, why wasn't <laughs> how you feel about the video? I was like, yo, why wasn't I on the team? So then when hey. the, and, you know, Justin was posting that. I said, um, excuse me, um, so what, what do you need me to do? <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put myself on the team. I was like, yeah, so w- what you need from me? <laughs> and so, you know what I mean? I we like, had to bring it. The- well, put me somewhere. Yeah. Let me, put me in coach. Put me in coach. Right? <laughs> no, nah, listen. Listen, <laughs> we got. We always got room for LeBron. If LeBron's trying to come to the city, we're going we're gonna to trade somebody and make room on the roster. We're going to make some well, kind of salary cap space. <laughs> and this is, you know, other than us talking business, this is us on our calls. And so... Mm-hmm everything together having in mind you know what do we want to do for our attendees as far as giving them the tools to be you know good you know personally professionally and career-wise like why not be a part of that team now why be now why not be a part of the mission and so right. i literally just been having you know a good time getting to know everybody thinking about now yep. future speakers solidifying and you know, we're putting in work we're really putting in work for this conference, and we really hope you, you guys enjoy it. I mean, I know some. Yeah. People, <laughs> I come in the meeting, and I I don't know if everybody knows this. I'm very opinionated, and I and I speak my mind. <laughs> so sometimes. In the meeting, good. Um, I vote no. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. I love it. <laughs> or I remember that time when we were all on the phone talking. I said, uh-uh, I vote no to this. We need a Zoom. <laughs> I know I, yeah, you were like, yo, you were like, this phone thing is rough. Like, I need, hey, let's get the Zoom up. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Now, ever since then, but, we, you know, we have a vision and about, you know, mm-hmm. as a team of young, Listen. young people of color. And so I really mm-hmm. yep. appreciate that. We can keep you guys in mind. And so if you haven't registered, link in, in his bio, the media bio, I'm sure on our right. page. It's also in my bio as well. If you go to my mm-hmm, page, mm-hmm. where the tickets are. So, hey, hey. so wherever, yeah. and you know, register. It's gonna be a pop in. I can't wait till they hear the yes. keynote. Yes, yeah. Oh yeah, the keynote. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. They gonna they gonna see tomorrow. Y'all stay tuned. We posting this week. All this week. Exactly. We even got some. Yeah. 
Because I mean, how, how many co- conferences you know got performances? I'm just saying. Come on now, come on now. Some stem, some <laughs> people you all, like, some of your favorite stem personalities across social media are going to be joining us for the conference. Um, Code in the Dream said, "Will there be any computer science speaking?" Listen, there's going to be something for everybody. So go uh, to stemsuccesssummit.com. One of the things that's going to be pretty cool, um, coding the dream, is that we have like a expo. We got like a mentoring expo that we're going to be doing, right? Yeah. Um, let's just tell them a little about a little bit about that. Even if it isn't like a session on your topic, yep. this is something that you will also benefit from. Exactly. So we're having a few STEM influencers, mentors in the field, who are actually going to be at our, our like mentor expo booth, to where you can actually mm-hmm. look, look at Kim. See, look, Kim guessing. Uh, <laughs> I know. I see her. I see her. <laughs> so in the booth, you can actually go to people that maybe you admire or have a question mm-hmm. about or what they're doing in their field. And so we have, we're preparing that for you guys. Got some real heavy yeah. entering an expo booth along with the speaker yes. workshop. Yeah. These are my friends. These are like people we know. Everyone we act. Right. Who we know. It's us. It's like yeah, for us by us. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> basically us talking to us but you know yeah you know young professionals you know late stage college students that are trying to figure out the next steps in their career and so it's just really exciting kind of putting it together i really you know i'm excited to see like the the end product the, the baby <laughs> yeah yeah growing for a couple of months now so i'm super excited. yeah 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 you know you talk about your personality and you probably heard me mention the other day like this is just the beginning so not only will you all benefit from this you'll be able to say i remember when it was the second annual and it was so good but man like th- this is so much more like i consider myself like a, a really like futurist visionary kind of person so i could see this being something that is going to continue to grow and we want you all to be a part of it so shout out to Princess, who says she just registered. Shout out to you. Don't forget, it's in both of our bios. Everybody on here, go register. Even if you don't want to go Please. Days, just go register. Just go register. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. I love it. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Corey. And, uh, you know, coming to an end, go ahead and tell us a little bit about what, what we can expect from you, though, just from your brand, just in the future, whether it's in the near or in the distant future. Like, what are some of the things that you see coming down the pike? that you want us to kind of just keep an eye out for. Yeah, of course, of course. So some collaborations, hopefully some partnerships that are coming down the pipeline, uh, revamping like my brand, about to change my website up a little bit. You know, you gotta like change things up every once in a while. Um, Yeah. I work with Paige Women Doing Science and we have our Wonder Fund, which is a travel grant for Black Indigenous women of color to go to different con- conferences, starting off with a geosciences conference. Um, I just did Black and Cancer Week and now I'm, you know, mm-hmm. board for Black and Cancer. And so we got exciting things. Nice. What we want to do with that whole movement moving forward. And then, of course, STEM Noir, which I was, is a research conference. Yes. Wellness is um, kind of thing we want to do for Black women, specifically Black women in STEM. We're going to have our conference uh, this summer, make it virtual. It was supposed to be in Puerto Rico, but, you know, COVID messed that up. But, you know, we're going we gonna to get there. And then Teresa came <laughs> You said Teresa, yeah, hair yeah. products. You know what? And I don't, I know people keep asking me, they're like, please do a hair tutorial. So who knows? <laughs> a pipeline in the future as well, because I know people ask a lot of questions about Sheila and how she gets to how she gets. And honestly, right. I just have to find the patience and the time and the willingness to do it, because y'all got a lot of hair. And <laughs> last thing I want to do is film the process. Um, but yeah. since the keys get an X and we got some hair products, you know, when I get a hair product sponsor, then maybe that's when I'll do it. Hey, you know, it's, hey, it's only a matter of time. We got to make that happen. Shout out to, we know y'all watching, uh, hair product, hair brands. Yeah. Go ahead and shoot a sponsorship real quick. Yeah, because I'm about to get this whole body back in shape. <laughs> time. So, you know, I'm just, <laughs> Yeah, I'm about to be a multifaceted, multi-talented. I mean, all around, all around. Listen, the title was uh, apropos. This is what Stem Success looked like. Yeah. You all keep following um, Dr. Corey Grayson on all her platforms. You're going to see so many things that are inspiring in all areas of your life. And Corey, I, obviously, like I said, this is this is bound to happen. And I just want to affirm you from me to you. Like, I, I 
love seeing what you're doing. I love seeing when, whenever you post something that goes crazy, like it just really inspires me because like, I truly believe in what we're doing. You know, there's science communication, which is a part of what we're doing, but there's also like, I don't know, it's just STEM lifestyle, right? And I just feel like you are a good representation of that. You're a good example of that. And so I just want to affirm you and tell you to keep doing what you're doing. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I've always looked up to you, um, especially like I appreciate Justin it, Justin, everybody that's on the board. But you know, with STEM media, I'm like, yo, that's 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 cool. And I'm like, oh, he didn't got one. <laughs> oh, oh conferences now, and that's the <laughs> that's the beauty of social media. A lot yes. of people haven't even even met each other. No, it's like Kelly. I've never met. Right. I she right. And you no, know, Amber, I've never met, but we had our IG live, and I feel like you know that's somebody. There you go. Like we, we were at the same HBCU, so a lot of it is yeah. talking, networking, peeping each other out, showing mad love and respect, and one hundred percent, them success gonna come up. So there we go, there we go, there we go. So please do me a favor before we say goodbye. Can you leave us with some parting words of wisdom? Just it can be a quote, it can be something that someone gave you, but just leave us with something that we can carry on into the week. Um, yeah. To add to what you've already shared, it's been so great. I think for me, and I tell this to everyone, is show up, take space, and bring your authentic self. Um, nothing is, again, more pure, more wonderful, more freeing than being yourself in a field and in a place where you always may not feel the most accepted or feel the the best about yourself but you're here we're here to support you you have friends you have allies you have people who have d done the same thing um and willing to help you out and always always stick up for yourself take care of yourself advocate for yourself no one's gonna fight for you like you're gonna fight for you so damn it get to it <laughs> <laughs> get to it corey thank you so much you've been great uh and i will see you at the next stem success Summit planning meeting. Right, right. I'll see you later this week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. Talk to you later. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, all. Give her some love. Go follow her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See you guys. All right, y'all. Listen, so Corey is actually, I didn't mention this earlier. Corey is actually the last Step Success Live guest between now and the summit. So we won't have one next week. So the best way that you can go ahead and link with us, the next time you'll get a chance, we'll be at the summit. So go to stemsuccesssummit.com, register, shout out to the people in the chat that already registered, and it's going to be a great time.